All right, hello everybody. What I wanted to do was just give you a little bit of feedback on your 90 second answers from this class, fall of 2020. Uh, so first off, uh, you know not to answer the salary question. And uh, I hope you believe me uh, because it did work out for that one student three years ago. Uh, and uh, uh, I was a little shocked at some of the uh, salaries that you requested. And so uh, part of uh, the assignment was like this is a trick question because uh, you should really think about your 90 second answers in relation to the job you're apl applying for. So while I did kind of downplay the fact that it was for a human resources specialist, uh, you know, it probably was important that you think about, or at least research, uh, what we're talking about. And so, here in New York, uh, hourly, it's uh, $33. Uh, and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, yearly, it's $69,000. Uh, however, uh, you know, this is the average. And, of course, there's a distribution around the average, but, of course, most of the scores fall within uh, one positive or standard, one positive or negative standard deviation of the mean. Uh, but then also, this is for human resources specialists who have different uh, tenures that is different lengths in a job. And so you can imagine that if you are just beginning, you would probably have a lower salary to begin with. So. Uh, you know, it's nice to uh, dream, but, uh, you know, check the data, check ONET, uh, make sure that you understand uh, what you're talking about, but never talk about salary. Uh, and, uh, you know, so that is, you know, one question that you really should not answer. Okay, uh, when, you know, just some interviewing advice from somebody who hired high school, I mean, college graduates. Uh, yeah, your 90 second answers are really important. Uh, those basic questions I gave you, you should have boilerplate, uh, maybe not for 90 seconds, but for a good uh, you know, amount of time uh, to uh, basically describe who you are uh, and why you're good for that position. Uh, even the basic questions like, well, tell me about yourself. Uh, that's kind of a trick question. Uh, because what the interviewer is hoping they'll do, you'll do is you'll disclose something that will give them information as to whether or not, and usually it's not, to hire you. And so they're looking for you to say things uh, that will, uh, you know, scare uh, them away from you. And so it's important to literally, and you know, job seekers are told to uh, by you know, uh, you know, co you know, coaches to literally write down and practice your 90 second answers for the different standard questions. Have a boilerplate for you that is have a standard script for yourself. And the standard script should always be tailored for the job and the company that you are applying to. So how do you know that? Well, research the job. Uh, go to ONET. and research the KSAs and see how you can include those KSAs in your boilerplate about who you are. Uh, also research the company. Uh, you could look at the company's website. You could look at research article on news articles about the company and you could find information that you may want to add uh, you know, to your uh, 90 second answer to fit the company. Uh, but 90 second is really, a, a, you know, I think, a good, uh, you know, target, you know, to shoot for. Uh, you know, 45 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, that's what you want these answers to be. Uh, you want to, uh, you know, tell, you know, you want to tell people about yourself uh, and in a way that uh, really uh, draws them in and makes them want to hire you. I was interviewing once for a position and, uh, you know, I start out with, well, tell me a little bit about yourself. 
and 20, minute, 20 minutes later she's still talking. And of course, that's when, you know, long before that I knew I was not going to hire this woman. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, I continue with my interview when I asked her what about her salary. Uh, boy, did she go into how, you know, she requires a big salary. She's just moved to Ohio from the West Coast and, you know, she's used to West Coast type of money. And, you know, the thing about, you know, you really shouldn't talk about salaries because when you do, it makes it, you sound like you really are in it for money. And of course, well, duh, that's what you're in it for. But uh, as a manager, I want to hear somebody talking about the fact that they're motivated to do the job and they're motivated to do a good job. That's what's going to give me confidence uh, to hire someone. Uh, so on the other side of that equation, uh, you know, a 20-second answer, tell me about yourself, that you know, just shows that you're not interested in the job. You haven't done your research. You haven't uh, found out things about the job. KSAs, you haven't found out things about the organization, so that you can talk about why uh, you would be a good candidate for this job and for this uh, corporation. So remember uh, your audience, which is the interviewer, and you can imagine that your interviewer is a manager uh, or somebody who has been a manager. And so they're looking to see whether or not they would want to manage you. Uh, and so uh, the assignment for last week was, you know, what are some, you know, some things that may sound like a negative, uh, that, that sound like a positive, but may be interpreted as a negative? Well, I want you to really critically think about that as you describe yourself. Uh, I don't really want to, uh, you know, point fingers at people. And in fact, if I am picking on you, that's a good thing because a PhD is giving you advice about how to improve your interviewing skills. Uh, but saying things like, I'd like a higher position in the company and I'm not wanting to uh, stagnate. One of the major problems is job turnover. Uh, you know, when, you when anybody leaves a position, uh, it costs the manager money. Uh, you know, you're going to leave the position, so now they're going to have that position unfilled. Uh, you know, they're going to have to do a search. They're going to have to take time to do the search. That costs money. They're going to have to advertise it. They're going to have to, uh, you know, a lot resources to it. it. It's very expensive. Some indicate that for a middle middle management position, uh, you know, having a job turnover would cost. Uh, seventy to a hundred thousand dollars in a in a, for a middle management position. Uh, so uh, this statement like this, well, you know, everybody we know is always thinking about themselves, and they're thinking about like getting a better position and not wanting to stagnate. But something like this, you know, would tell the interviewer that you're really focused on getting out of there, uh, and so uh, you know you want to avoid anything that could be interpreted that way. Uh, likewise, uh, my intentions are to pr pursue a master's in economics. Uh, it's okay to talk about plans, but don't talk about specific plans and don't talk about near future. Uh, and I would just leave it there and I would talk about how I'm a good candidate for this job. And if they do ask you about your future plans, where do you see yourself in five years? Uh, you know, and of course, in 2015, everybody got that question wrong. <laughs> Nobody said, I'm going to be locked up for a year in my apartment. But uh, so, you know, you say that uh, in five years, I could be working here, uh, you know, because you know, it's a good position. Uh, or I could be doing something else. It just is really difficult to predict that far in the future. Uh, and that would be an adequate answer. Uh, so even if you are planning on just working the job for a couple years, even if everybody knows that nobody would stay in this job for more than two years, don't say I'm staying in the job for two years. Uh, some people would say that I'm an opportunist. Again, we need to rethink that. Uh, everybody, you know, 
in, on the job, everybody's an opportunist. So to point that out means that you're kind of saying that you're really an opportunist. And that's kind of scary. So again, audience is always important. Think about your audience. If I was a manager and I had to manage you, is this something I'd like to hear? Oh, and it's a very short, uh, you know, a couple of slides. So that's it. Any other questions, online office hours would be a great place to discuss these. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.